Hello, my name is Felisa Jeffrey. I'm a second year MBA student and Center for Digital Strategies Fellow at the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth. I'm pleased to welcome here today Mark Hillman, Good morning. Vice President of Strategy and Product Line Management at CompuWare, who's here joining us as part of the Center's Corporate Roundtable Anniversary, as well as part of the Brit Technology Impact Series. Um, Mr. Hillman, welcome, and thank, thank you for you. being here. Thank you. Thrilled to be here. Thanks. CompuWare is a leading technology performance company delivering, uh, I guess, a bit of value in critical technologies to businesses. How would you say cloud computing has enhanced CompuWare's value proposition to clients? Yeah, I, I think uh, the cloud computing phenomena is still in very, very early stages, mm -hmm. but has become a core part of um, our strategy and what we project the market going forward. I, I think if you take a step back and think about it, the um, I would submit this may be the one of the biggest changes in the history of IT, and I know that's a very big statement and a bold statement, but I think in fact um, it's not per se about the technology, and we can review the history of all big technology trends, but rather I think it's about the fundamental implications on the IT and business model that we really haven't haven't seen before, and it gets at the uh, the the very very core. Uh, if you look at the companies that I think really kicked us off, mm -hmm. Amazon, eBay, Microsoft, and, and so on, the scale of IT that these companies have put into the market is so fundamentally different from what a normal company or even software and hardware companies have done that um, it's really changed the game. To think about companies with um, a large corporation may have 10,000 servers mm -hmm. or 20,000 servers, some sort of measure, but to think about companies with 500,000 servers or 1 million servers or installing data centers that are the size of 10 or 15 football fields um, it explains a kind of game-changing um, density of innovation that I think fundamentally changes, changes the game. With that said, I think the, the topic right now is adoption. Mm -hmm. you know, can, will companies actually um, jump into that space? And so Probably the big debate, and, and we heard this at the roundtable mm -hmm. yesterday, was, gee, are we ready? What are the primary issues and, con and concerns? And so um, while I would submit that it's, uh, it's overhyped mm -hmm. and it's very immature, um, it, is a, it, is a, it is a trend that's, that has, has uh, um, a, a long way to go and it will, will change the industry. We make software mm -hmm. that basically says, hey, are your systems working? Are, are they working well? Are they, are, they, um, are they performing at the speeds and that sort of thing? And what happened was, uh, in the old days, companies would manage their stuff inside their data center mm -hmm. and the industry was there. But what's happened, if you look at a modern application, um, you know, part of it runs inside the company, and a lot of it runs outside the company. Okay. Right? Everybody believes they're going to get to everything from their their uh, smartphone, certainly from their PC. And so, what's happened is a mass scale shift already now that um, there's a lot of computing running outside of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at a uh, a large retail site, if you look at your cell phone company. And you say, um, you know, where you can go change your account mm -hmm. and uh, look at, uh, you know, what your usage was. Um, one of the big carriers I looked at recently, they have four sources of content come from inside their company, and 23 come from outside. Other companies are providing that. Okay. So what they now have is a fundamental shift in their business model. They used to be able to say, hey, Tim, can you go reboot the server or whatever? And now <laughs> they've got 10 or 20 companies that they need to manage. And so the IT guys shift in their in their job is from standing up boxes and wires and writing code, which they still have to do. And now they've got to manage, uh, you know, debatably uh, a dozen or a couple dozen suppliers mm -hmm. well, if they're gonna keep the promise to the business right. that they still on the, are on the hook for. So it's a, it's a vastly different um, business model. Okay, okay. Thank you for putting that in context for us. Sure. So you touched a bit on sort of the benefits. I um, guess from a little bit of my research, I see there's being perhaps six main primary benefits. Okay. Um, that being increased storage, uh, reducing costs, possibly high automation. Yep. Um, a bit of flexibility and mobility. Yep. As well as um, 
as well as perhaps focus innovation. So you're mentioning sort of the shift from IT doing more of server updates and right. maintenance to actually being focused on creating the value. Right. I was curious what you thought were the opportunities for the greatest gains there. Um, so it probably depends on the company and the industry. Of course. Mm -hmm. Right, and there's a lot of variation. In fact, what I would tell companies is, I think your list is great, is depending on what are your goals, then that affects what is your strategy mm -hmm. relative to how you might access those, um, th those different value opportunities. Um, I think the early discussions have been around cost and cost saving. Yep. I think those will become, uh, I shouldn't say immaterial, but not really the center of what it's all about, although that's the discussion. I think it'd be more on the innovation mm -hmm. side. Um, if, if you think about the um, ability to uh, parallel process work that you never could before in seconds or minutes that you literally could just not have accomplished or would take you know hours, days, weeks, all of a sudden the, not IT, but the business implications of what they could do and how real time the corporation could be uh, cha changes changes fundamentally. So I think that's one. And then two, your 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 comments on um, can they stop doing all the kind of uh, daily tasks right. and work with the business guys mm -hmm. to say, gee, how could we actually um, leverage, take advantage of all this technology to change our company's business model? Mm -hmm. I, I I think that's the the big big screaming thing and um, if you look back at the last five ten years and all the trend on the consumer driven stuff on you know Facebook and Twitter yeah. and so on um, all the the uh, the kind of common consumer stuff is now pressure on the corporations to redefine the relationship with their customers and um, as we come out of the recession I, are we coming out of the recession I think we're trying. We <laughs> try. <laughs> so if we're coming okay. out of this session, but what we see companies doing is, um, of course, spending on top line. You know, they all hunker down trying to to, to reduce costs. But as they come out, they're trying to spend on dri driving the top line growth. Um, how they're growing, we've seen a market shift in the investments um, being connecting electronically versus some of the traditional ways they try to drive their top line growth. So many organizations um, see various risks associated with cloud computing. One would be security, the other, the other would be privacy. Yeah. Um, what would you say are sort of strategies or techniques that sort of firms could employ to mitigate those concerns? Yeah, so that is the center question that people start with when they start talking about cloud computing. Certainly m many other things, but I, I would submit interestingly that um, and this actually came out in the round table, mm -hmm. table yesterday, and we said is um, security isn't actually a barrier. Mm -hmm. It's just a task. It's something that has to be done, and there has to be due diligence around it. I think that the bigger risk that the IT guys need to comprehend is actually the uh, the business risk. In other words, um, th think about you know before they had the projects and the assets and all these things that they had to manage, and that had, that came with risk, uh, normal implementation type risk. Now that's been moved to the suppliers, mm. and the idea of um, innovation and new technology and the basic reliability of what they're buying. Um, that responsibility has moved to the suppliers. Okay. And so the, the enterprises, if you will, the buyer, um, has placed that trust in h how are they actually going to make sure that works? If you think about it, they, they've kind of moved the purchasing function and the engineering function, the architecture and the innovation side, and you, you can make a whole list. And um, on one hand, it's made things simpler, but on the other hand, wow, you really need to have confidence that um, that 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 supply base can actually execute on your behalf. So, I I uh, your question spot on, right? Security is the number one start point, mm -hmm. but it seems like it quickly drops as just a topic. And when they get deeper into understanding, um, you know, the promise to the business that they need to keep, it, it becomes a much deeper set of questions. Okay, Mr. Hillman, on behalf of Tux uh, Center for Digital Strategies, thank you for joining us today. We definitely appreciate your insights and your thoughts. You're welcome. Thanks a lot.